Welcome back to Saxthorpe Farms and got the two canola harvesting contracts done, the six wheat harvesting contracts done. Even with the two combines, it did take quite a while, but we've got a decent amount of canola and a lot of wheat off of those. So a fair bit of cash has come in, which is good because uh, we have a fair bit we want to spend. So we got 22,000 liters of canola which is quite nice, but we've got about 90 odd thousand. So both of the trailers are full of wheat and there's a little bit in the combine. So yeah, pretty good. We do have a lot of repairs to do as well though. So this combine, not so bad, couple of grand to repair. Obviously it's fairly new. It's only got 12 hours on the clock. It's not so bad. Um, the vent is not so nice, not so nice. It actually made my eyes water a little bit. Um, here we go, yep. This was, uh, uh, yeah, 20 grand to repair. It is pretty damaged and it's got a lot of hours on it. It's at the point where it's going to be expensive to maintain and we should maybe think about replacing it at some point, but for now, we're just gonna have to uh, eat those repair costs. And it was repaired out in the field at least once. Um, so I did take the repair truck out to get it repaired. Um, yeah. We are going to sell the solid fur that's in the home brew. Um, let's give the truck a quick wash. But yeah, the uh, 40 odd thousand liters of solid fertilizer is actually worth a fair bit. And there's a reason that I'm trying to raise cash. You will have seen from the thumbnail the uh, job. I think so anyway. Yeah, the job that we're going to be doing for most of this video, which is harvesting the silage. And I did say I didn't want to do it with the uh, the existing forage harvester. And I'm so glad that we weren't forced to. Um, so there was a crone big X forage harvester in the sales when I was working on those harvesting contracts and kind of that was my goal was to buy that um, unfortunately that dropped out of the contracts which is not contracts the sales which is a bit annoying um, so yeah just basically trying to raise a bunch of cash because we do need a bigger forage harvester a four meter header is not going to cut it. I think it's a four meter header anyway. Um, well, it would cut it, but it would take even longer. Uh, yeah. So, but as you can see, this is bringing in a load of cash, which is really good because we're going to blow most of that 128,000 pounds. In fact, all of it. So got the 7250 up at the store. First thing, Annaberga field liner forage trailer. 45% off, 56 grand, bargain, sold. I want a bigger silage trailer. Um, I actually want to replace the old Richard Westons we've got eventually, and this is the start of that process. So nice big silage trailer. This is going to be going on the 8 Series, but that's up at the other farm ready. So on its way, on its way up to the other farm with the other silage trailer. So we'll swap them over once we get up there. Um, yeah, I saw this was in the sales as well, so thought this was a good buy. 55,000 litres, so very nice. And uh, yeah, also luckily in the sales. So there's weirdly, there's a lot of harvesting kit in the sales. So we're going to sell what I've got now. It's only worth 16 grand. It was very cheap to buy, so it's not really a problem. And, uh, yeah, that four metre corn head up off it goes and then yeah in the sales there's a lot of harvesting kit in the sales so uh, there's a fent ideal hmm? but 32 hours on the clock not ideal uh, there's a beet harvester there's only seven hours on the clock which is not bad it's a grape harvester there's a two track you really don't need that but there's a fent katana which we're going to pick up. It's only got seven hours on the clock, seven and a half hours on the clock. So yeah, this is the jobby for us. Long pipe, 190 grand, which is actually, you know, pretty good. Um, and sticks with the Fent brand. So yeah, 
kind of surprising that there were four harvesters in the sales at the moment. So I guess a bunch of farmers were clearing out before harvest season. So we do need to pick header up um, 650 horsepower. So I think we can run a seven and a half meter header of this. Um, I'm just quickly going to check the sales, make sure there isn't a header in there as well. Uh, nope, not so lucky. There is a Thor 7810. We don't need another 7810 on save. But yeah, we will pick up a... Um, it's going to be a Kemper header because I don't think there's a Fent one. So, um, and I don't think we can run a 9 meter one. So, 7.5 it is. 650 horsepower jobs are good and we will get the fent attacher i don't know if the attacher makes a difference to be honest but 100 grand that hurt that hurt so 180 grand later we have a new forage harvester but with the size of this field we really need it oh, we really need it and having done as much of the field as i've done at this point we really, really need it. Uh, maybe we needed bigger, actually. Or two. Um, yeah. So, I don't know if we've got any additive at the main farm. But we're just going to buy a pallet anyway to fill up from here. Yeah, this was a big old field. And I think next year, looking at my crop rotation, we're going to have three fields of corn. So that could be fun. One of the field 17 that we harvested, there's a cultivating contract. So I'm going to send off the Fent MT to do that on course play. Um, just there, just there. So that can run, earn back some of that cash while we get on with doing our forage harvest. Put your teeth back in. Um, so one of the things that I'm excited for, obviously, because I'm expecting that most of you have watched it, because like 5,000 people have watched it. Expendable Pastures. Obviously, I have access to that mod. I'm thinking, and so the cornfield that I'm currently foraging, born on here goes the sunflowers. What I'm thinking is that we chuck some grass in that field and we put an expendable, expandable pasture on there. Um, temporarily I think that would be kind of fun what do you reckon maybe maybe not um, anyway let's uh, get set up so I've set up auto drive back at the far cow farm or the bunker that doesn't have bales in it um, auto drive caused me some stress recording this some significant stress the i think the i love the way this map works i love the hedges and the raised field boundaries auto drive does not auto drive does not respect them. and the number of times auto drive got a vehicle stuck trying to get out of the field drove me crazy i know that arms in briscoe has them classified in the map so that they shouldn't and auto drive should ignore them or should treat them as field field as hedges or something like that but it doesn't and it is incredibly frustrating uh, i persevered i was very tempted to edit this trailer to hold like 200,000 liters and just get loads of it done uh, yeah it was so between that and um so i end up getting course play running in the bunker doing some compacting and leveling it had some moments um i found the way to solve those moments was to tell it that the level that it has attached was five meters wide not four meters wide that seemed to help um so that that seemed seemed to seem to alleviate that problem a bit um but yeah not, none of the automation particularly wanted to play um 
and it was not the relaxing when did I do this? I was mostly doing it on Saturday um, Sunday was not a great day for me Sunday was not a great day mentally I was feeling very very out of sorts so I uh, yeah I, I recorded an expeditions video and uh that was fun. That was, a, that was a nice bit of fun. I got a lot of stuff done on Sunday and it kind of got hit by a wave of tiredness and feeling a bit crap. So I, uh, I didn't play any farm sim on Sunday. I contemplated it. So I was, I, I fired up the Valley of the Old Farm and I was looking at what to do on there, but I just, I didn't, I didn't really do much on Sunday after that. I, uh, sat and watch YouTube a lot uh, pissed off Mrs D a bit because I was in a bad mood and yeah it was great I love Sundays mate well, no, I, just, I just wasn't feeling good um, I was very mentally tired uh, I think I've, I've said it a few times this this this, this the last week and this week at work are pretty hectic um, as the as we race up to the end of the financial year and I, I think my brain was just frazzled my brain was just frazzled so I, uh, yeah so I didn't really do much yesterday well I did but not this stuff I uh, I did first cut I te technically first cut so I'd already cut the grass out the front of the house I hadn't cut the grass at the back because when I did the grass at the front, the back of the house was too wet. The, the so it's, it's like we had the, the soil at the front of the house is very different to the soil at the back. The soil at the front is very dry and crumbly, um, but the soil at the back is very clayey and wet. And when I did the grass out the front, the back garden was like a swamp. It dried out enough at the weekend that I could cut it, sort of. So I did the quite a, I cut it quite long yesterday, and. Uh, yeah, so we did first cut of what we have as grass. On Friday, we got a guy into quote for replacing our damaged fence. Uh, that was tolerable. It was tolerable. It's not as about what I expected it to cost to get a bunch of fence panels replaced. Um, in the past, we would have just got the fence panels and gravel boards delivered. Um, and we would have done them ourselves. But with mrs d's health that's not an option um where i live i don't actually have many real world in-person friends um it, it's kind of how i am um all of my work friends live very far away um my real life uni friends all live very far away um my mrs d is an only child teenager has all sorts of joint issues um both father-in-laws have health problems my dad has health problems my brother-in-law could maybe help but they live where my parents are so they're like an hour or so away and so yeah i decided it was just easier to pay someone to do it um i actually don't think the cost of paying them to fit them is that much and they're going to take the crap away so i think Ultimately, I think it's worth paying someone to do it. Um, so actually, I need to get those guys booked in. So that means I need to phone them today to do that. Yeah, so... Anywho. We're making progress. So we're making progress. We're on the second headland. This field is huge. Um, this is a field that would be much better suited to a crop rotation that didn't include foraging. And... Um, that brings me on to something else. So I um, actually went on the get help for crop rotation um, to see if they had, and they don't. And then to um, I wondered if they had an offline spreadsheet or tool for calculating crop rotations, which they don't. Um, but someone had asked on there for a feature to add in extra columns like we had in FS19. And... Uh, 
I added to that request. Now, if they can't do that, can they just give us like a spreadsheet on offline tool so you can calculate more crop rotations? Because what I think we need to do is we've never quite a lot of fields is have two crop rotations. Um, because I would quite like our bigger fields to have crop rotations in them that maybe don't have foraging and that maybe just have like combinable crops so that we can work quicker, I think. Um, and I would also like to start mixing in some of the root crops probably in the next year we need to be able to afford a root crop harvester but i think we're at a point where we could probably do that particularly with that homebrew going um so yeah i uh the alternative is i just have to go create a blank save with crop rotation in it make the crop rotations screenshot them and save them on my computer that's an option I can do that. That's fine. So, I would like to mix in the root crops. I'm wondering if we can do it so that we can plan within our crop rotation, double cropping, and still get good results. Yeah, so I just need to have a big, big old play with crop rotation. But as we, I worked into the night ish, not that late, but needed to stop to feed the cows. So that's what we're doing now. Uh, I had to move the belt system out of the way that I was using to load May silage, so we're using the telehandler. I'm kind of keen actually to get to trade the telehandler. I don't like this one purely because it has control groups for the doors, and that means that when you want to attach or detach something, you have to uh, select through things to be able to alternate between detaching and moving the arm. Don't like that. So it's very minor and normally it's not an issue because normally we don't put the bucket on, but it just bugged me a little bit, just a little bit. So for some reason, I don't know why, I always had in my head that we had the New Holland one on here, but I guess this was, did we pick, um, yeah, with 35,000, we picked this up in the sales. So it's probably not worth very much. So I guess maybe in the future we can look to upgrade it. Oh, who knows yeah there's some, something I had planned to do which I don't think I'm going to do I had planned to do an electric swap on the old Deutz not this one the old one that we used for the front loader but now that we've upgraded it sort of I'm not going to but I am somewhat tempted to I've got a an old case that I converted a long time ago to be electric it's on my discord and i'm kind of tempted to bring that in and uh, maybe get bga actually no, it would be better to have that on the valley actually because we've got the bga yeah maybe i'll do it on there and um it's just i've never actually used it in anything other than a couple of tutorials and so it'd be kind of fun but maybe i'll add it onto the valley of the old farm now that i'm on pc i can do that uh, yeah maybe i'll do it on there anyway ignore me it's uh if anything it'll just annoy pete because i'm using an electric vehicle because it's good for the environment pete right yeah it's good for the environment anywho so we've put in some may silage some grass silage some hay and some straw we're not going to have a debate about electric vehicles They are not the answer, by the way. Yeah, and now I'm just topping up. So I need to do a load for the dairy cows and a load for the beef cows. And like what, I'm, what I'm thinking is if we planted that big cornfield with grass, it would easily support the beef that we've got now for grazing and maybe more. And uh, yeah, so something else. That, that, uh, there are some really cool ideas that I've seen pe people that have got people in the farming agency that are testing the expandable pastures have been showing some really cool ideas for how to use that mod um, particularly if you're into your role play stuff but yeah it's very very clever very clever right let's get some cows fed and then we will crack on the reason that i should chew the field at that point is i was considering stopping the video here because I've been foraging a very long time at this point 
Um, and I was kind of fed up with with it. But I do do a bit more. I do do. I did do. I did do do. Yeah. It, it's Monday morning. It's, uh, yeah. We are at the start of a fun, fun week. Uh, yeah, so that's the crop rotation. So we're going to corn into sunflowers. And we check the planting schedule. You can see that we don't plant sunflowers until March. So we've got like a big chunk of the year where grass is going to grow. Essentially for free. So I definitely need to work on the crop rotation before we finish harvesting this field. So we decide what we're going to do with it. Um, yeah, so I think with how many fields we've gone out, it probably makes sense to split it into two crop rotations because I'm at the limit of how many crops I can put in a rotation. So, uh, yeah, I'll have to have a play with that. I think I'll have to have a play and remind myself what are good pairings and stuff. There's loads of really good information on that on, on the crop rotation website. Um, yeah, it's a really good... It's, they, their GitHub is really good, actually, if you if you do want to geek out a little bit about the crop rotation mod. So the um, the pickup truck is in the field because I used that to go get the silage additive because we ran out. So, and then because it doesn't have straps in the back, because it's not really meant for carrying stuff like that in the back, it fell out halfway. So, anyhow, um, we are, this is running on course play. I just kind of wanted to show you how things behaved. Um, so you can see it's, it's done a reasonably good job of, of leveling and stuff, but it just kind of wasn't flowing super smoothly. Um, this, the, this, the Deutz worked better than the Fent MT, unless I was driving. If I was driving, the Fent MT was great, but on course plate, the Deutz was better. Um, and I ended up having to create a second dumping point at the front of the bunker, because otherwise auto drive was getting itself hung up. I was using one of the Volvos as well, and the Volvos were still getting themselves hung up in the bunker. Um, so yeah, that was still a big frustration, was that things were just really not behaving well. And I have no idea why they were looping like that to get out of there. Um, yeah, just generally not, not doing what I wanted them to do. Um, and the Volvo should have been on its way down, I think, but it was stuck in the field somewhere. Yeah, none, none of it was working particularly well. Anywho, a little bit of in cab, and then we're going to call it a day. So, no, it wasn't the Volvo. The, the 8280 with the Anna Burger was stuck in the field. So, it's my, I'm sure a lot of it is me being bad at laying out cosplay. You know, called auto drive networks. Anyhow, here's what it is. What, what I actually found is that auto drive wasn't really calling the second vehicle forwards when I would expect it to. And that maybe wasn't helped by the fact that because I was driving, as soon as you get out of the harvester, it stops calling. So, again, I was tempted to just put it on a work. Oh well. Anyway, yeah. I say thank you to the patrons and the YouTube channel members at this point. Appreciate you guys supporting the channel, particularly as I kind of whinged and ranted my way through some of this. You guys are awesome. Anyone is interested in those, there are links below. Um, and uh, we will uh, go take a quick look at the clamp at this point, and you can see how it's ended up at the end of this. I think probably so. In, in the next video, we'll finish this off, or I might finish it off between videos. I think it, I think the rest of it I'm going to send down to the main farm and put in the fermenters, because this will more than feed the cows, and it'll just be a little bit less stressful, I hope. So yeah, probably the rest of it I'll put in the fermenters. This all needs compacting, so it might look nice, but it's not compacted. So yeah, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button. Comments, questions or suggestions, stick them below and I will see you next time.